right. I'm gonna show this decoupler bar is kind of in the way, but those hoses, the air hoses, they have it's like a puzzle that fits together. Got a lock here and then a threaded. It's almost like it goes together once you get it started. There's your rubber gasket that forms a seal with the other ones identical. Well, after they hump out a train and are rebuilding it, they call it sewing it up. You take one of your air hoses and bend it up like that. Take the other one and line it up. Oh, it's kind of hard with my bad hand. And then let it fall once you get it lined up. Yep, not quite. Oh, I'm having trouble with this one. if you got a good both arms I could have done it a little faster but now the hose is together see how it hooks together now in order to decouple a train to get the cars to separate you have the decoupler bar painted white to, so it's easier identified against the dark background. Well, you take this handle and lift it up about that high, but only if the train has got uh, tautness in it, like trying to be pulled, the slack has to be let out. Like, see the slack, that gap right here? That's slack. And when the train pulls, these two pieces go together and meet. And then that's, that's what causes a connection, the contact. And that's where your slack action comes from. There's about almost an inch of slack in each car. So when the in locomotive pulls, this car goes forward and pulls together these two pieces these two pieces will meet and that's what causes your yank and if you got a hundred cars by the time the slack comes out of the last car the trains already moved a hundred inches so whatever speed that locomotive gains in a hundred inches that's how hard you get yanked with the slack action. So if the locomotive can get oh, going three miles an hour in a hundred inches, you go from zero to three miles an hour. It don't sound like much. But yeah, when you lift the decoupler bar up, right here, it pulls a little hasp. It, it pulls a little hasp out of the locking mechanism and that releases this little arm here and it opens up let me go find one that's already open oh and by the way us train riders call this the cheese grater it's got these little points that are real sharp and they're meant uh, for traction when you step on them you hold firm but a lot of times when we cross cars we have to drag our butt a little bit or a keychain will get hot, caught down in one of them holes that's why I don't carry much on my keychain now we'll go down here to the coupler that's already open
Now, see how that's open? Now, a lot of engineers or workers, when they get ready to connect a car, they'll pull this out. That way it's wide open. It'll make better contact. And this hole here, that's where they stick the EOT, the Freddy. It's got a shaft that'll stick down in there and hold it. Then the blinking light Freddy has got a little tube on the bottom that hooks to the last hose. And that forms a seal on the whole air system. Now, the EOT's job, I, there's not one here. They're so expensive they don't leave them out. The EOT, end of train, it's also called a, Fe a Freddy, Federal Rear End Device, Fred. Its job is to measure air pressure in the brake system. And, and in order to move a train, you can leave on 75 PSI. It'll still roll, but they like to go up to 90 PSI. That means full brake release. And while the train's in motion, if that pressure drops to a certain point, it sends a signal through an antenna on the top of it to the lead locomotive, and then they put the train in emergency. That means you gotta stop and walk the whole train and find out the problem. But there's the brake shoe. When the brakes are applied, it mashes to the left presses on that axle and slows the train down. There's one on the other side too. And they're easy to take out. There's a little pin you pull up. Let's see, let's see if I can get it. That pin right there, you just lift up and the brake shoe falls out. Uh, usually when they go into emergency, it's because I'll get to one because the little rubber gasket has broke and air is escaping and causing the lower pressure. Yeah, here, if you look, you'll see the rubber gasket, that little circle. Usually them go bad. That's the main reason. Or sometimes they'll have a, a split hose or rupture. Or this seal is given away and they all have extra hoses on the locomotive and a wrench they come out and fix it with but yeah usually every car has a cheese grater now with the brake manual brake like if they sit out a car and don't want it to roll they take and clockwise uh, he's already got it tightened down but in order to release the brake, you just lift this handle out. And man, it is pretty loud too, because that slack comes out of the chain. See, he's already got it tightened down. They call that tying down a car. And when you twist this clockwise, it lifts this chain up. And I'll go on down the line. And right here, that upward motion pulls on that bar like a levy uh a pulley so that going up on this side would push down on that chain which in turn will pull this way which is connected to the brake system so that manually presses that brake shoe now here's kind of i would do one on the yokes but this bar right here goes all the way through to the other side and it's got like a cotter pin in it that holds it in. Of course, you gotta go to the maintenance uh, shop to have them replaced. And when you remove that out, this whole coupler pulls out. And some couplers have a ride control system. There's a big piston or spring in there that alleviates some of the hard slack action. This will actually come out on a huge spring softly instead of a yank now the this whole system with that axle and that axle that's called your ride control 
A lot of truckers call this unit a tandem, but the springs have a spring inside a spring, and all your weight rides on that, and this bar here goes all the way through to the other side and sits on them springs. Now the whole entire ride control fits on a pin back in there. It's about that big around and four inches tall. And the car sits down on that pin. That's the only thing that holds them, the train together, that one pin. I've met engineers that told me they pulled a whole ride control system from in, underneath a, a rail car. Now another thing, talk about your rail, your class of railroads. Here goes the dang wind. All right, now this rail here, see the height from bottom to top of the rail? That You get different classes and they go by weight by foot of rail. This right here is probably, oh, I don't know, 80 pound per foot. And that's usually found in yards because there's no high speed on it. Then you get over to the main line. Now, see how much taller that is from the bottom to the top? That's probably the 115 pound per foot instead of the 85, that's 30 more pounds per foot. That's your different classes. Now, if you look real close, you see the little etches in these rails. When you're riding on a freight car, that really sounds wicked. When you're going real fast, it kind of goes, as you're picking up speed. <coughs> but what does that? There's a huge maintenance away car that has grinders set at different angles the whole length of the car. The first might do the edge of the track, and then the second one's a little more tilted. The third set of spinning grinders is a little bit more pitched, and they round that head of the rail. Because over time, trains will flatten the top, the weight of the train will flatten those rails out especially on curves they call that shelling like on high speed curves the inside of the rail will wear out fast because the inertia is trying to push the train up and over the track so it wears more on one side now in the mountains on them really hard curves they'll put a 55 gallon drum buried in the ground full of oil real thick like nanny weight oil and there's a little mechanism that comes up about this high and it's got a piston pin on top of it about that high and that pin sits right where the flange of the wheel will hit it and every every axle that goes over the flange of the wheel will push that piston down and they'll have tubes aligned under the track and up on the edge it squirts a little bead of oil on the axles and that kind of helps reduce friction actually going around when you ride through the mountains you get this glitter metal flake dust all over you and man that that's from shelling the shell dust little pieces of the track come up and off the wheels too and oh man that stuff is itchy 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 yeah I'll, I'll go ahead and do another one on the angle cock. Let me do. Let me go to the end. I can explain it better. I've done another video on the angle cock. Now, this one's open, so he obviously pushed it back in here. Now, the on the other end of this car, it's turned. That way, when they hook the locomotive up, they'll hook the hose up, and that air can't escape, so they got braking capability on the cars. But you lift up, turn counterclockwise, and let it back down. That's a safety feature, that spring in it.
and that stops your airflow from coming out of the pipe. Ugh. Now a lot of railroads, when they separate a car or a locomotive from a car, they don't touch the hose because when it stretches out, that uh, piece I showed you that I put together earlier, that piece just automatically comes apart. Uh, they call it dynamiting when the air, because that air rushes out real quick and then stops. It goes, and a lot of the times when that happens, it'll blow up gravel up in the air, and that can injure a worker, so a lot of railroads won't dynamite. They'll turn the angle cock and close it and then separate it, and then slowly they'll let the air out of the car over a few seconds instead of all at once. Yeah, and that's called dynamiting when you let it out all at once. That small cheese grater up there. Now, this used to be one of my favorite cars to ride, the gondola, but with my bucket and pack and my bad arms and hand, I could probably climb up it and get in if some crackhead was after me, stalking me or... <laughs> The last gondola ride I had was in my videos about Donner Pass when I was with Freddie Garris, that German book writer. And I got some pretty scenery in that. If no one, if you guys haven't seen it yet, that's that's a really good video with all the snow up in Donner's Pass. All right, let's see. Let me get some black in my video where I can see my timer. All right, I'm at 16:53 trying to make a longer video uh, trying to think what else I can explain oh if you're ever looking for a railroad nail to spike a door and can't find one a lot of people don't know but these railroad nails will pull out pretty easy this one's not but if you just give it a little wiggle you can pull it up and pull it out so just remember that if you see one sticking up a little like this, it's not down on the bottom of the rail. They usually pull out pretty good. Now, what I use for a hammer to bang the nail down in the door track, I'll get a railroad plate. These are pretty heavy. They're about four or five pounds, depending on what size one you get. Make a great hammer. Then from there, you can sit the nail in there to the other side and use that for a handle to carry it with because they're so heavy. Well, I hope I ain't shaking this camera too much. I'm sorry about the wind. Somebody told me I could take a piece of masking tape and put over the microphone. Well, I've never seen that one before. Now, on Google once, I found a listing of how to tell what car lettering means and I had for a while had the list let me find a number to show you what I'm talking about yeah the OMNX it had the listing of all those and what they meant like TXUX that's Texas State Utilities that's coal that goes to the utility uh company when they haul the coal in to be burned to make electricity out of now let me set my camera up again and show you guys my new shirt one of the new ones anyway so uh, let's see just bear with me a little bit oh man there's my I don't know if I'm in a shot or not. I'll just move a different way. I hope I didn't push stop. But anyway, that's all I can think of right now. Maybe you learned a little bit from that. I hope that helped clarify some things for some uh, people with in, uh, inquiring minds. Yeah, if anybody out there knows what OMNX, 
it stands for a company. Uh, all right, uh, shoestring out.